hey guys what's up so we continue our revolt of 1857 series and in this lesson i'll be talking about the causes most of us know that enfield rifles and cartridges and pig and cow fat these are the main reasons or bone dust in the atta or the floor but apart from that there are n number of reasons why this revolt took place this is presented by me roman seni do follow me on an academy see first of all there are most important are the political causes now the native rulers realized that east india company is very greedy it has come solely for its own purposes it is thirsty for power land resources they backstabbed many of them during wars and they charged enormous amount of money from both the losing party as well as the party they are serving for okay all the losses were recovered from the belligerent parties okay britishers always gained from wars okay they served only the side they sided with the side which served their best interest okay so this was clear till now now this planted lots of doubts will maybe next time they will like uh, not favor us or maybe they'll screw us next time so everybody was very scared then actually there were some policies like subsidiary alliance system by lord wellesley okay then doctrine of lapse by lord halsey they were very very exploitative expansionist policies okay and then the doubt became very very clear because they prevented the inheritance like lord dalhousie properly prevented the inheritance and denied the right to succession okay in certain cases if especially if the male heir is not there so obviously these were the main causes then the doctrine of lapse by lord dalhousie the following states were annexed like you don't need to remember the year just sometimes some stupid people ask the sequence in which they were annexed to so satara Uh, in 1848 jaitpur and sambhalpur in 1849 bagat in 1850 udaipur okay this udaipur is not of rajasthan okay it is in chatisgarh so people make this confusion jhansi obviously and nagpur jhansi is the most famous case of doctrine of lapse because of rani lakshmi bai but all these you need to remember now very very important question is avadh was annexed into the british east india on the grounds of misgovernment or alleged misgovernance or whatever you want to call it it was not because of any other reason it was this is asked a lot of time then punjab and lower burma which is also called as pegu earlier now it is called as bago it was annexed through war so just remember punjab wars everybody knows first anglo sikh war second anglo sikh war 1845 46 and 48 and 49 uh, so we will talk about it later when we talk about the modern indian history so now the third important cause is prince fakrudin of delhi he died in 1856 what happened was the next prince was stripped of royal title by lord canning and the traditional moguls who used to live in these massive forts and these residences they were thrown out they were kicked out okay then it was a really embarrassing situation for mighty mogal empire which was there for last 200 300 years total and they were completely kicked out from their own houses so that was like very very shameful now those groups of people like artists singers etc malvis pandits were completely dependent on these classes now they will be also affected right because they were on the patronage of these classes so when they are affected so obviously they are also affected now we will talk about let's say administrative causes so there was massive corruption obviously especially at the lower level in police courts bureaucracy persistent debt insert some form or the other now what happened very very important is earlier the ruler or the king you had a feeling that he was from your own house he belonged you belonged okay so there was certain sense of belongingness to mother india or our country land but now it was a completely alien ruler who was ruling you from my thousands of miles away so that was first time in india's history that was happening right because earlier ruler used to come from outside but they used to settle down in india but now there was no sense of belongingness now there were parallel events going on like first afghan war obviously nobody has ever won in afghanistan till date no no, no country won they just stay there and come back it's very difficult to beat afghanistan in their own backyard so obviously overall afghanistan won but in punjab wars like first anglo sikh war and first uh, second ang sorry for this it is second anglo sikh war so obviously the winner was the british okay but still there was massive losses in crimean wars which happened between russia and the allies like obviously uh, uk won but like france uk were on the one side russia was on the other side there were many other allies but still there was massive losses similarly in santhal uprisings 
so british suffered heavy losses of resources i'm not talking about the defeat in the war but there was heavy losses of resources okay so that has a lot of effect on your governance and all now economic causes was drain of wealth theory obviously everybody knows which was provided later but technically drain of wealth was going on here also now land revenue system like permanent settlement system mahalwari rayatwari we will talk about it later they were extremely exploitative right so extreme taxation lead to money lending at very high interest rate like exorbitant now emergence of new landlordism peasants become very very furious now traditional indian economy was obviously completely destroyed because of industrial revolution raw material was taken from india and large finished product of low quality machine was dumped into indian market so handicrafts industry were dealt a mortal blow they they were on their funeral pyre they died completely destroyed artisans were left unemployed now this is a very key line which i have written they were looking for jobs in agricultural sector but the jobs weren't there okay this is very important now import of manufactured goods from british india at dirt cheap prices and finally the land of the landed aristocracy like zamindars etc was seized the status quo was uh, they were uh, testing their status quo on what authority they are holding these lands and finally there was loss of status in the eyes of uh, feudal public the india was very much feudal till then no matter what everyone else says we were very feudal and they were very furious and they were very angry because of this so everybody was literally want to kill britishers some way or the other now social religious reforms like christian missionaries came so there was official missionary nexus there okay they were allowed to preach openly so they thought that hindus and muslims would be converted to christians now reforms like bengal sati regulation by william bentick which lead to abolition of sati hindu hindu widows remarriage act by ishwar chandra vidyasagar helped in that promotion of women education by savitri bai phule who was the first woman teacher and his husband and her husband jyotiba phule then there was so these all led to, the, to thinking that british wants to take over our religion take over our social policies then there was religious disability act that also called as lex loci act what it did is it, it made it easy to convert anyone into christianity so earlier ancestral property was not allowed if you converted but now it you can inherit it even if you convert to after religious conversion into christianity so that's also was a very painful point then introduction of taxation of lands of mosques and temples very very furious point then there was various issues this suppose like they were not allowed to wear marks which can identify one sect or caste then pros- proselytizing means changing into other religion or belief there was rumors going around that army people are changing them to christianity then there was general service enlistment act earlier hindu thought that crossing sea will lead to loss of caste so it allowed it wanted undertaking serving that they can serve anywhere as the need be so obviously it was a very painful point for them then there was less pay discrimination in promotion racism inferiority complex then annexation of over obviously was a very big deal these two you know bone dust was there in atta then enfield rifle the cartridges were greased and they needed to be bit off before the usage and there was rumor that they were lashed with pig fat which was very like oblivious the the muslims were completely against it and beef fat hindus were completely against it then post office act 1854 abolished the privilege of free postage for sepoys so these were various reasons okay and then in avad what happened is the sepoy is nothing but peasant in uniform so their heart will beat for rural area right 70000 people were from avad so every farmer family had one person serving in the army so not only their lands were snatched but it was annexed also as i have already told on the ground of misgovernance there was extreme taxation and painful land revenue system so sepoys just wanted to uh, do something about it so finally as you can know that there was simmering discontent people were furious it was a pressure cooker like situation there was suppressed anger pent up emotions any phrase you want to coin it was completely unleashed through this violent revolt it was necessary rather revolt acted as an outlet and finally the people were relieved to a certain extent and british empire was shook and uh, shook to its foundations everybody farmers merchants rulers religious heads artisans sepoys landlords they all participated in one way or the other regional region wise it was different but people from all classes participated so this is one of the images as you can see people are fighting the are people are fighting with pikes and they were fighting with guns so that's all i'll continue this revolt series mm, thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day do leave your feedback thank you